just a reminder of how to go through your classic chest x-ray. There's a bunch of different reading systems. A, B, C, D. E was always the one I was sort of taught. You start with your airway, here's your airway, and look, there's, here's your carina right here. Uh, and then B can stand for a couple different things. It can stand for bones, it can stand for uh, breath. And basically to me, that means take a look at the general lungs. So like, look at your costophrenic angles, they look fine. I think most of y'all are, are sort of getting this, that there's you know this sort of thing here. This especially, sort of like this lymphadenopathy. Steve stands for cardiac, so you do your cardiac silhouette. That looks normal. Looks less than one half the diameter of the chest. There's a question how to differentiate AP and PA. Uh, if they wanted you to know, they will give you the, the letters on there. They're not usually relevant on, on step one. Um, and so then, yeah, you make sure there's, you look at the clavicles and also to suggest a quick thing that you're going to look for you know, you're looking for pneumothorax, you're looking for cardiomegaly, you're looking for fluid at the angles here, or in this case, hilar lymphadenopathy. And I saw in there uh, from a couple of people, sarcoidosis. And this is associated with immune mediated non caseated which differentiates it from tuberculosis or fungal infections, what are caseated or basically cheesy a gross thing to think about. Um, uh, granulomas. These are non caseating which is pretty much the only thing associated with, the only thing when, you, when I think of non caseating granulomas is sarcoid. So there's like two or three things I think for caseating. This is pretty much it for non. So don't forget about your increased ACE, uh, your hypercalcemia, your elevated calcitriol levels, um, a lot of times if they want to be tricky, they'll give you not only like a mild hypercalcemia, but a mild hypophosphatemia due to the fact that the calcium is going to complex with the phosphorus and drop your phosphorus. So keep an eye on that. If you see high calcium, low phosphorus, high lymphadenopathy, so you, you know, you can, you, can, you can slam that one home at that point. Um, our friend Erythema nodosum is back for more fun. Uh, Bell's palsy, anterior uveitis, other autoimmune disorders. Um, don't forget about your classic associations, uh, African-American women, 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, if you see someone who had a, uh, a first degree relative with lung disease at a very early age, think very strongly about sarcoidosis. And in real life, sarcoid can do all sorts of things. It can be cardiac sarcoid, pulmonary sarcoid. It's unfortunately a very tough disease to treat. And this is, again, a nice, nice comparison between the two. This is your normal hyla. Again, going, doing your A, B, C, D, E. You've got a nice airway here. Uh, B is for breath, so you have your nice, tight, sharp costophrenic angles. There's no fluid. C is cardiac, you have your nice cardiac silhouette, and then D and E. So you check under the diaphragm for free air. Free air usually indicates a perforated viscous. But E is everything else, and that usually stands for your bones. 